Live from the Washington, D.C. area, it's the Inside Scoop, and we'll plan it. All the ecology news that our viewers want to know. Now, here's your host, Executive Director of the Emerald Planet, Dr. Sam Lee Hancock. Hello, I'm Dr. Sam Hancock of Emerald Planet, Emerald Planet TV. We're coming to you live from Dar es Salaam in Tanzania, a very beautiful, large country that's on the move as we go through the 21st century. And I have sitting right beside me is Jessica Mishala. She is the founder and president of Sheena Inc., both of the United States and Tanzania. Jessica, welcome to the Emerald Planet TV. Thank you for having us on this show. Well, what you're doing here in Tanzania is absolutely fantastic. And I've had a chance to travel with you through a number of different communities uh, throughout the country. But let's start off, what is Sheena Inc.? Sheena Inc. is an organization basically registered to empower women, youth, and children uh, all over the world. We focus more on the most vulnerable groups because they're the ones who need more our help. Now, looking at Sheena itself, that is an acronym. What does actually Sheena stand for? When we are trying to identify the name, Sheena stands for a big tree, a trunk. Uh, in Swahili. It means though, she asks for send hope, inspire knowledge, utilizing accumulated knowledge and skills. We believe it takes a village to raise a child. That's absolutely fantastic. And thank you for having us here with you in Tanzania. Now looking at uh, some of the different communities that we've traveled through, even though most people may not be familiar with some of these communities that are watching us both in the United States and around the globe, just give us a, a flavor of some of the different communities we're in and then maybe a little short description of two or three of those just to give us a, an idea of the difference between them. Uh, when we picked up the communities to help uh, for this particular trip, we thought we should mix both and visit all the areas where we are working. So we started in Pemba. Pemba is an island of uh, Tanzania, United Republic of Tanzania, and it's 99.99% .99 Muslim community. Our women there, and special needs children, they really need our help. And after that, we traveled to Unguja, another island of Zanzibar. And we went to Makunduchi, where in both islands, we are supporting a lot of women in their projects of gardening, uh, chicken cool, uh, school fees, uh, orphans. And it touched us to see how far we have come with them. And from there, we decided to visit the city, where you can see the people, the vast growth, and the questions, and the economy, and social media, it was a different take, uh, but yet our women and youth, they need uh, the knowledge we have. That's in Dar es Salaam. That is in Dar es Salaam, yeah. the capital city, currently the commercial city. The capital city of Tanzania is actually Dodoma. From there, we went to Kisarawe. Uh, Kisarawe, we were dealing more with the vulnerable children and street children, in a sense. That was really touching because they have nothing. Uh, you could see the hope in their eyes. And they are depending on us as Tanzanians outside of Tanzania to kind of be the voice. From there, then we went to look at the school system, which was in Kiba. We picked gift school for secondary school for a purpose. Uh, the school is upcoming. The owners, they run it according to what we expect. And also they, have, they were lucky to have a youth from Washington metropolitan area in 2011 who visited the school, spent a night, sat in a classroom. That was an awesome, awesome experience for our youth in the United States. Uh, then we flew to Mwanza. Mwanza is near Lake Victoria. We have uh, a special education, early education program called ITICA, Early Learning Center in Ilemera District. We were able also to visit and have a chance to talk to the community members and the children. The next day, here we come. We came to Kagera. And Kagera region is the area, unfortunately, we just experienced the earthquake in, wow, 5.7 magnitude, not a long time ago. So we, and we, most of our projects are more here in Kagera. 
Now, looking at uh, all these different communities, uh, there's a great variety because I've had a chance to uh, witness those. And your primary focus, of course, is the, the women, uh, the youth, and orphans, and, of course, some of the elderly. Why did you select those different categories of individuals specifically? Uh, women rights, in, they differ from country to country. We are a little bit behind, and we wanted to make sure the girl child education is emphasized, but also the women understand their rights, and this could be access to education, health care, uh, political leadership. But it's going to take another woman to look at them in the eye and say, yes, you can do it. Now, looking at the uh, areas Pemba and Zanzibar, predominantly uh, the Muslims, and then you have, it's a mix throughout the rest of the, the country. So why did you select those different areas, which are quite different uh, than on the mainland in Tanzania, and maybe some of the impact that you believe you're having there? Actually, they found us, but we didn't find them. Uh, you look at the grassroots level, what will be the major impact you can have on any community. And if you want to have any impact, you have to involve women. So if I take to our brothers and sisters in Pemba, culturally, you have to be able to reach them on their level. And you cannot reach a woman without involving a opposite gender. So gender issues became uh, very important. Uh, looking at the, uh, the gender aspects of this, uh, one of the things that we've talked about actually in the United States before we even come over, uh, that the real development happening on the African continent, much of that, uh, particularly in the small business area, is focused on uh, females. Why is that the case? Uh, number one, females are very, very aggressive. They are the one who takes care of the family. So if you take an example of um, you, um, Pemba or Unguja, the gardening really saved their life. They could produce the food to feed their family, at the same time have access to sell in the market, which generated cash, and they can support each other. Sheila does not give a loan. It gives a grant, and they ask the committee to pay it forward. That has made a big, big difference. Yeah, this is something I was just amazed because most of your uh, international NGOs, and you're definitely an in international NGOs, uh, provide uh, extensive amount of money in many cases to the local communities or they're paying for the activities, paying for the staff. But you operate on a very different process and a very different focus. Tell us about volunteerism and China Inc. Uh, China Inc. does not have any overhead. So we look at the community. We have to find someone who believes in our vision and ask them to volunteer. Because for us, we don't receive any grants so far. We use our own money and our friends to bring the help. And we want 97% to 100% to go direct to the grassroots level. The advantage we have, we don't go to any community without understanding their culture. You cannot give help if you don't take time to understand what makes people tick. Now looking at this, uh, people would be amazed to think that you have all volunteers that are working in these various communities and you have an extensive now number of communities that you're working with. How do you find all of these volunteers? You will be so surprised. It does not take that much to find someone crying for help to find someone asking, can you bring this to us? So those who are a little bit able, they are willing to do anything so that as a community, they can move apart together. It's, um, in a way, that shows you the passion they have for the development of their communities. Now, this, this is really true, but I've met many of these uh, volunteers that you have. They're extremely dedicated, very energetic, uh, and they have complete faith in what Ishina Inc. is doing here and also their commitment to their own communities. How do you think you're able to identify, the, and it seems to be universal across all of your volunteers, how do you identify people that passionate and they're willing to give so much of their time when they still have their own families, uh, their own uh, commitments within their communities, their community of faith? How do you think that happens? So you have to understand the culture, what makes an African stand up and sing and dance. 
um, it does not mean we didn't face any challenges. The challenges were there, and if we faced any challenge where we felt the volunteer was not doing what they're supposed to do, we had no problem saying it's not working out, it's not benefiting the community, and we part our ways and we are still friends. However, what drives them, those who stayed with us, is because they know when you touch one family, you touch the community, including their community. And for that, they don't survive as an island. They, they survive as a net, together as a community. That's fantastic. Now, looking at the, the benefits, and this is something that I've actually chatted with some of these about, but uh, what do you see happening to your volunteers as far as their personal growth, maybe even uh, professional activities and professional skills they're gaining by being part of Sheena Inc. Most of our volunteers gain a lot through the exposure, the training, and part of it knowing that when they meet volunteers from the United States, we are able to open the doors for them. And what they do with that door then is up to them. But our efforts want to be contagious to others to volunteer because once you do that, then likelihood of having a success program is more than 98%. That has been the motto of, for the theme that we together we make a difference because it takes more than one person. What I know is not what you know, but together we can open the doors and bring skills, bring technology, bring different ideas of how we can improve our lives economically, socially, together with cultural power. Now looking at the schools, I know this is something you're focused on, both the primary schools and then also the middle and high schools. Why are you looking at the schools as one of those sources of groups of people that you want to deal with and to provide the services through Sheena Inc.? When you look at the girl-child education or access to anything else for that matter, you are not going to improve our life unless you focus on education. But not just education only. We want to instigate, we want to activate, we want to be a proactive on science area. That makes a big difference and we have to start on educating so we can eradicate the poverty and disease. You cannot do any of that without educating people first. Well, looking at the education, this is something that you and I have talked about in the past, is that some of the education you're doing really is to reach the adults, their, uh, their immediate family, extended family. How do you think some of the education and training that you've done through Sheena Inc. actually goes up, you know, from the children to the adults and is really helping in the communities? Wow, let's look at the women's seminars and training, which we conduct every summer when we come. You have to understand the environment we are operating in. If you gather 150 women and you have a particular topic, whether it be HIV um, prevention, whether it be prevention of domestic violence, whether it be access to health, you reach more people, more family, because they are passionate. A, a mother, a woman are the ones who build the family in most of the African cultures. They might not be the head of the family, but they actually they are the pillar of the family because without the pillar, the house cannot stand. Looking at all the work that you've been doing across Tanzania, it's absolutely fantastic. The communities that you're serving, the people that you're reaching, and all of the new projects and programs that you're planning. So just share with our domestic and international viewers a few of the plans or where you see Sheena Inc. being over the next 5, 10, or 15 years. I see Sheena Inc. in the next 5 to 10 years reaching more regions, reaching more people, population we serve, making a difference in many lives. Um, it is the dream that any best practices should, and every Tanzanian should be able to get it as long as Sheena Inc. is involved. Now looking at the, the work that you're doing, what are you gaining from this experience? And we have just a few seconds to do. With someone with my background, when you come from a humble background, you want to touch many lives. I feel complete. I feel valued and I feel I've contributed to the development of my community. If you had uh, any one word to uh, share with a young woman out there that may want to have the next Sheena Inc., what would you suggest? I would say do not give up, 
have hope and be encouraging to each other. That's the only way we can make the next step. So looking at that, this, this next step uh, going beyond all the work that you're doing is what would be the one word you would like to share? Access, access, access. If you're not on the menu, you're not on the table. And thank you for being with us.